Hi, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to guide you through each step in the proper procedure for diagnosing an open or faulty flame rollout switch. Now, to begin, we need to turn the thermostat to call for heat. So let's click on this little orange circle, which will set the selector switch to heat. In addition, this will also turn up the temperature setting above the room temperature. At the end of each step, we're going to need to refer to this procedure guide at the top and answer the brief question. So we're going to click OK here. Next, we're going to remove the burner cover, and we're going to take a brief inventory of which components are running or operating. First, let's look at the burners. Well, we can see we don't have any burner operation here. We do have a pilot flame, but there's no burners lit, so we're going to click No. Next, we're going to look at the circulator pump. And as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows, the circulator pump is running. Now, you can check this with a... Uh, with a digital clamp on ammeter as well that will read fractional amperages so you can verify if the circulator is running in that manner as well. So the circulator is in fact running. Next we want to verify that the vent damper opened. Now again the vent damper is just going to close off the flue passage on each off cycle to prevent heated air from escaping up the draft diverter or draft hood. Um, if you look at the shaft of the vent damper it's vertical, which indicates that the damper is in fact open. Now, if it's closed, the shaft is going to be flat or horizontal. So yes, our vent damper is open. Next, we've already verified that the pilot was lit. We'll just take another look just in case you didn't see it the first time. So our pilot's lit. Next, we want to inspect for connections at the gas valve. Now, it appears that all the connections at the gas valve are secure, so there's no loose wires. Next, it's probably easiest to measure at the gas valve first, but let me show you what we're going to do here. On the wiring diagram, if we click this bottom left icon, you'll see the wiring diagram, and all the switches are shown in the current sequence of operations, or the way that they would currently be. If we look, we see the gas valve here in the right, and preceding that is a series of safety switches. Low water cutoff, rollout switch, spill switch, and of course the vent damper end switch. Now we knew the motor of the vent damper is working fine, but we don't know that the spill switch closed. So our next step is to check for voltage at the gas valve. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place the leads across these glowing orange hot spots at the gas valve coil connection. And when we do this, our meter reads zero volts, which means the gas valve is not receiving voltage. Okay, now if you click back on the diagram, this is a pretty neat feature. You'll see that your meter leads show up on the diagram where they're actually placed within the circuit on the boiler. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so next we've got to determine which of these safety switches is our culprit here. So again, I'm going to store the wiring diagram. We measured zero volts at the gas valve. Next, we're going to place one of the leads on the red connection at the high limit switch. Click OK. Once we've done that, we're going to place the other lead on the spill switch at the right side here on that orange glowing hot spot. Now, if you're a little confused on this, let's go back to the wiring diagram. When you look at your lead placement on the diagram, you're just simply reading right across this vent damper end switch. And because we read zero volts, that indicates no difference in potential, and it verifies that the vent damper end switch has in fact closed. So we've got zero volts. Next, we're going to check the spill switch. Now, if you look at the spill switch, there doesn't appear to be any loose connections on it. The, the two wires appear to be secured, and this is the spill switch right in the center here. Now we're going to measure for voltage across the spill switch, just like we previously have done with the vent damper end switch. We're going to place the lead across each connection point. And as we do that, we can see on the meter we have zero volts. Again, this verifies the spill switch is closed, so this isn't our culprit. Next, we're going to go to the flame rollout switch. Now, here's the flame rollout switch down here. You can zoom in to get a better look at it, and just make sure there's no loose connections, and you can see the connections are very secure here. Now, the rollout switch really protects against delayed ignitions within the boiler, and this is usually due to either dirty burners that result in a delayed ignition and a flame rollout of the front of the boiler, or it could possibly be due to a competing exhaust appliance nearby that's pulling the flames out the front of the boiler. And this is just a temperature actuated safety switch that when the temperature is too hot there, it's going to trip and turn the gas valve off. 
So let's measure across it now like we did on the spill switch previously. And when we do that, we place both leads here. We can see that we have 24 volts on the meter at this point. This indicates the flame rollout switch is open. Now listen, before replacing it, make sure you look at the burners and they may need to be cleaned. They may have some evidence of rust or corrosion that's resulting in a delayed ignition. Or it's possible you have some type of exhaust a fan or possibly a clothes dryer nearby that's pulling the flames out of the front of the boiler, causing the rollout switch to trip. But for this instance, we're gonna assume that we've checked those and they're all good and that the rollout switch is in fact faulty. So now that we've got 24 volts across the rollout switch, we can click on that. But just a note here, if you want, if you click this top left icon, the procedure guide will come up in a step-by-step -step basis. So if it's necessary for you to review any previous steps that you're not clear on, you can do that by clicking that icon. So our next step is to click that we've got 24 and we're gonna click on the rollout switch to replace it. And again, there, our burner's fired. Wonderful, so you should verify one full sequence of operations to make sure things are working okay. And also go up in the house and make sure that heat is being delivered to the space. And we can see by this baseboard radiation, this red graphic, that in fact heat is being delivered to the space. So we finished the problem. Good luck on your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.